Hi, it's Tyler Matthews, the Executive Director of Venture Cafe St. Louis. This is another episode of People Behind the Innovation. Today, we are talking with Drs. Laura Beirut and Christina Gurnett of Washington University's Institute of Clinical and Translational Sciences. Christina and Laura, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Let's start with introductions. Sure. So I'm Christina Gurnett. I'm the Associate Director of the Institute of Clinical and Translational Sciences at Washington University. I'm also a professor of neurology there. My name is Laura Beirut, and I am leading this function about precision medicine as part of the Institute of Clinical and Translational Sciences, and I am the Alumni Endowed Professor of Psychiatry at Washington University. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's start off, actually, if you can unpack a little bit about what ICTS is doing, some of the exciting things, kind of what your mission is, that'd be great. Right. So the, the ICTS is actually part of a nationwide consortium that's funded by the National Institute of Health. And our mission really is to improve the speed at which new discoveries are translated into improving human health. And as part of that approach, we do a lot of things at the ICTS. Some of that is training young investigators to do science and to do translational science, which is really, again, that process of bringing medicines and new discoveries to patients. We also do pilot awards so that we fund new studies that are going on at Washington University. And then we try to make the whole process of doing this more seamless. And so part of a new initiative that just started last year is this Precision Medicine Initiative, which Laura and I are leading. So I'll let Laura tell you a little bit about the Precision Medicine Initiative. So what we know now is that it takes about 20 years for discoveries to move into clinical care. Right. It's a generation to move from discovery into clinical care. And what we want to do is we want to decrease that amount of time. And that's one of the major functions that we're moving forward with. And so precision medicine is one of the strengths of Washington University. We have the McDonald Genome Institute here, which is where uh, much of the first human genome was sequenced. And we have this excellent clinical care that's given by the physicians here and at the hospitals here. And so what we want to do is join those two things and accelerate the science that we've been discovering in precision medicine to clinical care. So let me ask, what is precision medicine? Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. (laughs) So what is precision medicine? So the whole idea about precision medicine is that we're all unique, and some of us respond better to certain medications than other medications. We all live in different environments. We have different stressors, different exposures. And so how could we identify a person's environment, a person's susceptibility? That could be biological susceptibility. And how could we then move forward with the types of treatments, the types of prevention for you as an individual. Right. So being able to figure out exactly what a person needs instead of having to um, kind of do a one-size-fits-all solution for individuals in their health. Absolutely. So, you know, we have at this time a lot of one-size-fits-all. We do general screening mm-hmm. in the a population, mammography screening for all women, colonoscopy screening, lots of different things. But some people are at higher risk and maybe need screening earlier. Others are at lower risk and may not be benefiting from the screening. So how do we start to tease this apart so we are much more effective with our treatments and prevention? So. You're saying it's about a generation right now from one end of the spectrum to the other, from the lab to the population. How are you looking, or what kind of ways are you looking to decrease that time frame? Like what kind of innovations, what kind of things are happening to, to try and accelerate so that? I think- One of the most exciting things that's happening now at Washington University is the movement into a new electronic medical record system that's called EPIC. We've been using electronic medical records, but I think with all the new informatics that people have and some of the expertise that Washington University has, we can now start to use this information from a really enormous healthcare system. I mean, we're really one of the biggest healthcare systems in the country in terms of the number of patients that are seen. And so can you start to harness all that information about risks, drug treatments that are already going on, and then start to pull out that information to improve outcomes for patients with many different disorders? 
I think the other thing we're doing is we're sitting here at Venture Cafe. You know, really, because what we want to do is we want to bring the scientists and the clinicians out of our world and to sit here with innovators, people who are trying to move things forward, entrepreneurs, and to kind of share that information. We want to change the world, and we want to speed up the change of the world. And so we think this whole idea of, you know, getting us out of our places where we feel very comfortable here is good for us, and we hope that we could generate ideas. Yeah, that's that's one of the things I'm I'm really excited about for um, February 22nd is the idea of being able to get folks from the lab, scientists, what we call serendipitously colliding with the other entrepreneurs and folks in the broader innovation community uh, running into each other. And maybe there's some good synergy there. Maybe there's potential for collaboration. I'm very excited about that. And so on that note, can you share a little bit about about what we, we can expect, a little teaser for Thursday, February 22nd? Right. So as part of the activation tables, kind of the entrance and welcome, we've got Purian Diagnostics will be present, representatives from the Scandalaris Center talking about some of the initiatives that they're working on. The ICTS will be there talking about some of the genome engineering. I think we'll have some fish that were developed using genome engineering. So we'll have some hands-on things that people can see. Yeah, very cool. So I'm curious, how has technology impacted, uh, I mean, obviously, precision medicine, electronic health medical records is one thing. So on the consumer side, is that affecting what you're seeing happening in, in your world? So I've never seen things move so fast. With the type of training that I did 30 years ago, I just look at where medicine is now, and it's it's just going so quickly. So one of the things that's moving forward is this idea of patient-centered research mm-hmm. and patient-centered care. So we see this changing with direct-to-consumer genetic testing. There's 23andMe, which is advertised all over the place, where you could now get very state-of-the-art, high-quality genetic testing and find out about your ancestry and find out about some disease risks. We're seeing just the mobile technologies that exist out there. So you know, people have their iPhone, their iWatch, their Fitbits, all of these different technologies are starting to come into medicine. So the idea that you would go into a doctor's office, the doctor sees you for 15 minutes, and you know that's your whole evaluation, is I, I think it's going to be something of the past. Instead, it's going to be this more continuous monitoring that you have of, oh, I have a heart problem, and now I'm being monitored through the month for how my heart is. Parkinson's disease, they think, is going to be the new technology changes where you know you hold your phone and they could tell how much of a tremor you have with your phone wow. so you know you're at home and you take your medications and is your tremor good is it bad um, maybe you need changes in your medications and we could monitor these things you know much more comprehensively get this information feed it back and we could also use these technologies to reach out to rural areas and to areas where you know it's difficult to get medical care. So I think this whole landscape is going to be changing in the next 10 years. 10 years, yeah. That was my next question was how far out. So that's it's going to happen quickly. And what's interesting with technology advancements is that, you know, as humans we kind of think linearly. And with technology it's kind of on a curve. So who knows what will happen even within that 10 years. But that's exciting. Is the... Are we ready? Like, is the, is the medical world, the health world, like, how are we adapting to this? It seems like we've seen it coming for a while, but... Right. Well, what we can do now are really is really pushing the limits of what the legal and sometimes ethical questions that can arise when you try to do these types of treatments or experiments. So just for one example, recently, Washington University, we published a study that allowed you to look at markers to do pharmacogenomics, which is allowing you to pick the right dose of patient based on certain biologic markers. And so this was for a study that was using blood thinners. So almost everyone who has a joint replacement, heart valve replacements, there's a lot of things that you'd be put on a medicine called Coumadin or Warfarin. And there's lots of information now about all the genetic factors that change how much of this medicine you need. But really, it hasn't been put into practice with the exception of you know one study that came out of Washington University very recently. So it's here, but you could ask Brian Gage, who did this research, and I'm sure he'll tell you there were many steps along the way where it was difficult to get this into the electronic medical record. It was difficult to get the genetic data back into 
to the record where physicians could see it, um, where they could make the changes that they needed based on this information in the chart. So physicians need new training on how to use this. Patients also need to understand the limits, but I think it's definitely coming. We just have to make sure that the system is there and prepared to take it on. Right. With all these things that we talked about, what is there anything in particular that um, you personally or even the team at ICTS are excited about that's coming up besides the event with Venture Cafe? What other things are coming up that have you guys excited or passionate about? There's so many things, it's hard to pick one for me. So so I'll give an example in cancer, with breast cancer. So what we now know is we could do genetic testing for risk in some of the genes that are associated with the development of breast cancer. BRCA1, BRCA2 are these kind of classic genes that increase the risk. There's a company out there now that charges $249 for the sequencing of the genes, the counseling and that is, that's just a price that really makes this genetic testing available for such a wide part of the population. So we see prices going down. This technology is driving that. So my training is in psychiatry. What I see happening in the future is I think we're going to actually be doing a lot of the therapy over our phones. Oh, wow. Sense, How so? Well, I think that there are going to be bots where you know some of the things that you could do that are kind of lessons and exercises you could do with these bots. And it's not to say that humans will be eliminated from this, but it could be two in the morning and you're stressed and you could access this and, you know, use this. So it's the idea of therapy anytime, anywhere. Mm -hmm. And these technologies are putting it out there. And just to think about the type of reach you could have in Potosi, Missouri, which may not have many therapists out there or, you know, different areas. You could now have all of this out there. So we need to be preparing for these technological things that are just going to break our system the way they are now. It's just total paradigm changes. Yeah, that's very cool. And, I, you know, I'm really excited actually about reaching the community and doing more educational opportunities that where we can reach people and let them know what is here today, what is coming. You know, the ICTS is not Although it's housed out of Washington University, it's actually a multi-center collaborative group through the St. Louis Children's Hospital, Barnes Jewish Hospital, St. Louis College of Pharmacy, St. Louis University, and the University of Missouri. So we're, we're really trying to convene people across many different sites. And I think things like the Venture Cafe, we're also hoping to reach out into the community more broadly. Yeah. So what are some things that you or others in ICTS have adapted from the startup or entrepreneurial community? You know, I think, again, talking about communicating science, there's a lot of interest in how we can do that better. And so thinking about TED Talks or ways to pitch your ideas to an investor, you know, as a scientist, we also need to learn how to do that to increase the, you know, the interest in, in doing the work that we do. So we're planning on having some training sessions where people can learn how to do this better. Learn how to pitch, basically. Yep. yep. Very cool. And I think that the amount of science and the expertise right down the street from here, is incredible. It's really second to none in the world. You think of, you know, it's an incredible research institution. The clinical care is superb. And we need to get people out of it, I think, much more to communicate more what we're doing, why is it important, what is the science, and how does the science really drive the decisions we should be making? So I think of policy decisions. We're in the middle of an opioid epidemic. We have a lot of science about what we should be doing and how could we change society and change the world and really affect that? And shouldn't we be using knowledge to drive that? Yeah. Well, I am very excited to learn more about what you're doing to get the science out of the lab and into the public and in more than one way at the event that we're collaborating on together on February 22nd. So we hope that all of you listening out there will be able to join us from 5 to 8 p.m. Get there early, though, of course, at 3. Get ready for the, some good talks, some good sessions. Of course, you can go to see what the ICTS is doing in more depth at their website at ICTS dot wusl w u s t l dot edu and also see what sessions are coming up 
and the weeks leading up to even our next event at vencafstl.org slash calendar. Thank you both for coming on. I really appreciate it. It's exciting stuff and look forward to uh, seeing what more is coming uh, out of Washington University and ICTS. And St. Louis. Yes, and St. Louis in general. That's right. Uh, We're all kind of advancing all these together on these similar paths and uh, now coming to a convergence across all disciplines. And it'll be interesting to see what kind of new collaborations come out of that. So, Thank you very right. much. Yeah, you bet. Thanks.